The University of Utah and the Big 12 have released their schedule. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the games that stand out. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So the Big 12s released their schedule and, you know, basically breaking down who who's going to play where and when and basically breaking down all the key matchups. What are the, some of the key matchups that stood out to you? Uh, for the Utes, I mean, the, the first thing I see is they open up their conference road schedule at Oklahoma State. Right. You know what I mean? That is that is a rough game. Oklahoma State is arguably one of the best teams we'll face this year. You know, obviously there's some... Arizona was a scary team but with their coaching change. I mean, mm-hmm. they're still going to have their quarterback, but obviously they're going to go through some coaching changes. For sure. They're going to be a talented team, but Oklahoma State's the same team they were last year. They played for a Big 12 championship last year against Texas. They're going to be talented. And, um, you know, the Utes haven't been to a whole lot of big big scenarios like that. Should be a good one. It should be a huge test. Um, I think this game kind of sets the tone for the whole season, really. With everything happening, you know, if the Utes – you know, beat us, beat SUU, you know, assuming they can beat Baylor, you know, Baylor's got to come here, finish up our gimme schedule with Utah state at Utah state. Th- this one's going to set the tone for the whole season. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. Like going into this one, three, and know, um, th- this one could be, this one could be one of the bigger ones that, that really kind of say how the youth season's going to go after they leave Oklahoma state. They're going to, they're going to kind of know where they stand in the big 12. Definitely a good point. Definitely something that's not being talked about enough. And we'll definitely get into what the local talking heads are getting into when it comes to the schedule being released. There's really only one thing they're talking about. We'll get into that. But with that said, though, I think you're right. I think the key there is going to be opening to the Big 12 schedule, coming up against the juggernaut, juggernaut. Basically, the last man standing of the teams that are left from the Big 12 conference last year, like you mentioned there, playing yeah. for, the, for the conference title game there. So. I mean, we did mention it last week where some national experts are picking the Utes to finish coming out of the gates in uh, ranked eighth in the nation Yep. and the favorites to win the division. So um, definitely we're going to see how well that comes right out of the gate when it comes to opening up the uh, conference play for sure. Yeah, it should be great. I mean, and after Oklahoma State, the Utes go on, they travel to Arizona. That could be a really tough game, man. I mean, Arizona's returning Noah Fafita, so mm-hmm. he's going to be there. I mean, he tore us apart last season. Then the schedule really starts, man. <laughs> That's when the schedule really starts. Yeah, let's talk about that. So I, I do want to talk about the the main pieces coming on. So the thing that jumped out to most people, uh, when you if you listen to local sports talk radio or watch anything locally here, you'll know that the main game on everybody's mind is a game that's going to be played November 9th at Rice Eccles, and that's BYU versus Utah. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about this, if you listen to local sports talk radio, is everybody's up in arms about the fact that it's not – the opening that they they aren't playing each other in the opening week they're not playing each other early in the season it's right smack in the middle of the season it's not even during rivalry week it's not even during rivalry week it's last game of the season should be a rivalry game and utah is going to be at ucf yeah so it kind of sets that kind of basically puts it in a situation here now there's going to be multiple reasons for why that is right in the middle of the season one is that big the big 12 needs to play to the rivalries a little bit better that they want a key matchup throughout multiple weeks. You'll notice if you look at the schedule, there's going to be a a game of interest. And I think that's just where they wanted to put the BYU Utah game. Yeah. It's not during rivalry week, but on honesty in all honesty, 14 and four in the last 18 games in the last BYU fans, you can say what you want, but there's really not been much of a rivalry going on over the last 20 games or so. No, I mean, and it's always close because it's always an emotional game, right? Yeah. There's all there always is that rivalry matchup. You're always going to have, you know, obviously the, the schools are only 30 miles apart from each other, right? So we're going to have BYU fans in the stadium. I'm going to predict right now that this is a very large win for Utah. I, I mean, can hear the BYU comments right now. Oh, they absolutely. Great, they got a great defensive line. They're returning so much power on offense. They just need a quarterback, and that's kind of the point. You kind of need a quarterback to be successful <laughs> in college football. But you know, we'll just dismiss that piece altogether. And, and the Utes are going to have one. Yeah. The Utes you're going to have one <laughs> for sure. But yeah, that's kind of the big, the big piece there is my first question that, that uh, you know, on the, on that is where you prefer the rivalry game be played for Utah versus BYU. I've always been kind of like the beginning of the season type thing when it wasn't part of the non-conference, you know, but obviously now they're being in the same conference that kind of has yeah. to be a conference game. So where's your, where's your usually where you'd like to see that game? Do you like it to be in the last week of the season? Where do you like it? I, I absolutely love it end of the end of the year, last game of the season. I mean, the hope is that BYU c- returns to power, right? Mm-hmm. They're they're in a in a position to be challenge, you know, to be playing for a conference pl- championship. Utah is going to be in that position this year. My feelings are Utah is going to be playing for a conference championship in the Big Twelve, mm-hmm. and if that's the case, this that game 
with all the emotions and all the whole season on the line comes down to that last game where you've got to play and beat BYU, play for a conference championship. With everything on the line, that's when those games have been their best. Yeah, makes sense. Now, what I really like is they're getting the Bama, uh, the Bama Auburn treatment here where they're both coming off of a bye week coming into the game. What do you think about that? I did not see that, actually. Yeah. That is very interesting. So that does kind of add to the value about why it yeah. would be. Maybe it's scheduling reasons to get that. But yeah, they're getting the Bama Auburn treatment there. Yeah, both coming off the road by yeah. week and then play each other yep so they get like 10 days to plan for each other yeah that's very interesting no i uh i think that's excellent actually uh plenty of time to prepare you're gonna have an extra few days of practice there obviously i'm not a huge byu fan but to have those fans back in back in rice eccles how this game actually means something it's just that much more because this game didn't it didn't have the same feel when they were in the same conference yeah for you fans didn't have the same play i think that, that's my actually gonna be my next question to you we'll get to that but i do think that the game didn't change as far as how it how it felt for byu fans i think they still being independent realizing that if they wanted any notoriety on the national stage they had to go undefeated which is pretty hard pretty hard to do yeah i mean they had so, to win that game yeah you know so they I mean? kind of had to and, and good for them for getting the, getting one on the last but what you really think about is if there's a whole generation that's growing up now people are just you know graduating from high school and coming on or you know in their late 20 in the mid 20s that have not seen this be a true rivalry where it's just been you dominance for the yeah. last you know 20 games or so yeah has the game changed for you at all when it comes to rivalries and, and do you think this game is going to take it back to something like that but i mean even a lot of the youth players have never played this game no you know what i mean it's been years since they've even played it i mean cam rising was on the roster yeah um, yeah, but that was Utah loss. Like six years. You know, the players, yeah, they don't care. These kids are from Texas. They're from California. A lot of these kids yeah. aren't local. They don't care. But the coaches have really kind of put it together. And that's kind of why I think the Utah dominance has been there. Because, you know, Bronco Mental Hall always treated it like, uh, well, it's just another, you know, the faceless over on the other side. We're just, you know, it's just another game. And you're like, yeah, that's why you got dominated for like a decade. But I do think it, it will kind of return it to a little bit more of, of what it was, man. When, when they were part of the Mountain West, I, you know, whoever wins this game may not win the conference, but it's definitely going to be bragging rights within the state. And I think that's exactly what both teams could use right now. Oh, yeah. Especially for a, a little bump of juice. You know, I mean, to finish out those last couple of games for the season. We'll see where it goes. I think they're going to do a great job. I do think it's kind of funny how, you know, all these big games, especially with Ohio, like with uh, Oklahoma State, like you're talking about to open up conference play. The only thing everybody's talking about is where we're playing, when we're playing BYU and, you know, what it all means, you know, so. I think that's kind yeah. of funny. Return to old old school ways, but I, I think it's been interesting to follow for sure. Yeah, no. I mean, and like I said in the last video from last week, I mean, I cannot wait for the season to get started, dude. This is going to be such a fun Utah team to watch. I mean, it's it's going to be great. Yeah. Once again, folks, let us know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, has the rivalry game changed for you at all? Uh, what's your take on the fact that this is being played on November 9th in the middle of the season? Um, not during rivalry week, you know. What do you? What's your take on all this? On how the setup is? Let us know in the comments down below for sure. Yeah, and if you're watching on a short video, make sure you realize our podcast is going to be available right here. It's also available audio only wherever you get your podcasts. Absolutely. If you want more coverage on the University of Utah football, right here will be a link on the Utes for the playlist on everything we've talked about so far on the Utes. Also, make sure you click in the middle there to subscribe. We're on the grind to 1,000 subscribers. And once we hit that, we will be giving away the first $500 that we earn in AdSense revenue back to our subscribers. So make sure you're subscribed for that.